We've been in the forest for a while now and it's going to be a couple of hours until we get home. So it's time to start a fire, take a break and warm ourselves before we carry on on the journey. Fire can also be a great way to manage our body temperature, fatigue and stay grounded while we're in nature. The first step to starting a fire started hours ago when we entered the forest and that step was awareness. If we move through the forest listening to music or talking a lot or having the mindset of going from A to B, we reduce our situational awareness, our awareness of the environment that's around us. We're going to go through a process now, which is a great way to transition from the busyness of life. If you want to know more on how I teach and practice that method, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I will share something on that later on. My first memories are of my parents teaching my brother and I in nature about life. I found nature to be a very therapeutic and rewarding relationship in my life and it's now time for me to share what I know with you. It's proper cold so we're going to get a fire going soon. The mindset that I adopt which allows me to start a fire in these conditions, it's been blizzarding most of the morning, it's going to be wet on the ground. These are challenging conditions and I allow my imagination to pretend like I'm a little animal that lives in this forest, a cute furry animal. And then where would that animal live? Where would it go? Where would it create its nest? And what would it create its nest with? And then, so when my imagination goes with that, it takes me, I think I would huddle up <laughs> under here sometimes in a storm and I would take shelter because there's no snow here. So compared to higher up in the tree, these branches have less snow on them. And if it's raining, it's the same consideration. There's going to be less moisture here and on these pine trees as well. And, and most other species of pine that you'll find is that the tree, uh, the branches at the bottom are going to be dead uh, or that's where the dead branches will be and so this is a really good resource to get a fire going but I also need to not just break off any branch I look at it first to check that it's dead and then I feel it because I don't want to damage a tree unnecessarily I feel if it's broken and then I'll hear it as well so it's a very clean break so it's very broken and I can assume here that these are all dry and dead. I don't want to take all of the dead branches from this one tree, but I'll take a few. Something like this is worth its weight in, in gold. This tree is alive. You can see with the rest of the branches, nature has broken this tree off and it's dead. And the oils in this leaf are gonna be very flammable and very useful today. So you see just on this tree here, a branch has been broken off and that's a wound in the tree. And the tree's natural defense against fungi is gonna be its sap. And so it puts that out there to protect the tree to close the wound, basically the same way that we bleed and our blood coagulates and we get a scab. The tree's doing the same thing, but this is useful for us because it's very flammable. When I'm pulling this down, I always look away because the stick gets under a lot of tension and splinters can come out. And it's got me in the eye once before when I was in the middle of the bush, that was terrible. <sighs> See that? Yeah, so that came off with a lot of tension during that and if that hits you in the face, you got a problem. This could be a bit of a gold mine here. This is a pine tree which has died standing up. And what can happen with the pine trees is as they're dying, they withdraw their sap, which is their, their lifeblood 
down to the, the roots, the bottom of the tree. So if we have a look at the bottom, we might find that there is some sap rich wood down there, which can be really beneficial for the early stages of a fire. But even if there's not that sap there, it's still pretty good. Oh yeah, oh, you can smell it. That smells so good. So this is what gets referred to as fat wood. There's still a bit of moisture in there because it's been in the moisture laden soil, but um, we could be in luck. We'll see how we go. This is a birch tree. It's a classic tree in Northern Europe that's very good at the fire starting stage. There's different species. The one we have here is uh, very easy to peel the bark off, but a good rule of thumb when you peel the bark off is the bark is the skin of the tree. So you don't want to take off so much skin that it gets deep and the tree becomes naked and you don't want to take off much more than the size of the, the palm of your hand because then that's detrimental to the health of the tree. Green here is called Trollsheg and that's the troll's beard or moustache, I don't remember exactly which one, um, but the child's facial hair. We'll roll with beard. And um, this is pretty good at the initial stages of a fire. If it's wet, what you can do is, you can dry it off with your body heat. So if you have a big, hairy, manly chest, just like me, you can put it under your shirt and the heat from your big hairy manly chest will dry it out and then when it's time to start a fire this will um, catch a flame a lot better. So the grass behind me on the beach is also potentially another very good option for the initial stages of the fire. I took off my skis and this is how deep I sunk into the snow so I'm not actually going to gather the grass. I have enough faith that the resources in the forest is going to be sufficient for what we need but there's a very, very good option there. It's a very good fire starter. And again, if it's a bit moist and damp, chuck it in your pocket so your body heat warms it up. We gotta get going because this storm's coming in. We're in a mild snowstorm now. And so these conditions can be very difficult to get a fire going in. I'm just making a bit of a shelter behind us with the snow that we're digging up. That'll protect our backs from the wind a bit. So I want to make a barrier in between the snow and the fire to insulate them from each other. So I'll use these sticks and put them underneath. I want to make the fire as small as possible. And I always consider what I'm prescribing the fire for. What's the purpose? And if I just think about the biggest fire I can get that's going to waste a lot of energy and a lot of time. But if I make it small here, a really good rule of thumb, especially while practicing, is if you can fit your fire or the start of the fire on a little saucepan. That's a really good way to start and it really develops the skill. And then from there, you can learn to really play with the fire and then prescribe the right fire for the right purpose. Today's purpose is just to give us a little bit of warmth while we're having a break and to be grounded. So it's gonna be quite a small fire, but so the three of us, the crew can sit around and get some downtime. Cutting this, I'm making sure that my body is not in a position where if uh, the ax ricochets off, that it goes towards me, then I'm putting the pressure straight down. And I'm also not putting the ax in a position where if I miss or I have so much force, it's gonna go into the snow, because if you hit a rock or you hit something with the ax, you're going to chip the ax and then you lose the capability of this tool. And I see it by 
it's a common it's a common mistake that people are hitting with the axe right on the ground. Um, so that's why I'm hitting up with it up here. As soon as I'm done with it, I put the cover back on it. Another common mistake is that people will put blades down in the camp around them. And all you need to do is carelessly put your hand down and you split your hand open in the middle of the bush. So best practice is to always put every knife either back in its cover or fold it back up. So we've had our fire and our break. Now it's time to pack up. That's our duty of care. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you haven't already, hit subscribe and we'll see you next time.